Hello, welcome to Money Matters episode with Matt and Rich. Just Rich today, uh, episode twenty-one to one. Uh, Matt is under the weather, so we've got a little bit of a last-minute change. We're gonna keep with the regular recordings. We wanted to put something out there um, today, uh, but again, just a little bit of a last-minute change. What we're gonna do today is uh, actually a, a deep dive, or at least a dive. We'll see how deep it goes. Um, on a three unit property that I just acquired. Um, I, I think a, a great value would be actually to have, I have a client that just picked up a five unit. I'd love to get them on it. And they're a first time investor. They uh, were very nervous analyzing everything, not knowing what they didn't know. There was a lot of uh, talking them off the ledge, but a great experience they're having so far. I'm going to give them a little bit more time and then ask them hopefully to come on uh, and chat a little bit about their experience or at least record something with them. Uh, they're they're very busy professionals, so it might be tough to get them on during the day. Um, not that me and Matt aren't, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, so, yeah, there's a, a, a property, and I think this is great for investors, for owner-occupants, if we're talking investing and real estate. Uh, I had a, a friend of mine actually yesterday. He, so I just I just was told by my bank that uh, they can no longer give me loans. I said, "Well, what happened? Debt to income too high, you know, or you know, is my credit score affected, or you know, have I gotten too many loans? Because uh, there's with Fannie and Freddie guidelines, you can only get ten loans in your personal name uh, before you have to go and, and get um, them under a business or LLC." that you've created. So what the bank said was, no, Rich, our, our, our threshold is a million dollars in debt. I said, whoa, okay, a million dollars in debt? Like, holy cow. But, you know, and that might seem like it's huge, but really that's just, a you know, a few properties. Um, you know, if they're 400,000 each, that's two and a half properties, right? Uh, two and a half buildings. Um, so now what? Oh, I've got to go find another bank or I've got to close them in um, a, under business, a commercial loan, which uh, has its benefits as well. Um, but the, the rates are typically higher. So where all that's kind of going is there's multiple ways to kind of, uh, you know, look at, you know, debt. Uh, again, my friend, he had said, hey, you know, you, you've got a lot of debt. Like, doesn't that scare you? I said, well. Yes and no. No, yes, because it's a lot, right? Like, holy cow, I've never had a million dollars in debt. Um, but it's good debt versus like uh, credit card debt or vehicle loans or, um, you know, even your primary house. Is, there's a debate on whether that's good or bad debt. But, you know, there's, there's if not student loan debt, stuff like that. Um, and he was like, well, you know, if you have if you have money, like why wouldn't you just put it in the stock market? Like if you're saying you're going to get a return on your investment, why wouldn't you just put it in the stock market? So that's that's a great point. Why wouldn't I? Um, you know, the stock market, you know, they average over a fifty year period a ten percent return. Okay, so we'll start there. When we look at properties, we don't look at anything that doesn't get us a ten percent return. Bare minimum. So if I have to spend a hundred thousand dollars, I better be get better be getting a thousand dollars a month um, in cash flow coming back. So back to the stock market. Why wouldn't I put it in the stock market? I can't get cash flow. If I put a hundred thousand dollars in the stock market, I'm I'm not going to get a thousand dollars a month back. Also, I can I have to buy stocks one for one. So I'm. The hundred thousand dollars I get a hundred thousand dollars of socks. My hundred thousand dollars gives me five hundred thousand dollars of a property. So you can leverage that hundred thousand um, dollars. The stocks, while some may, may be dividend yielding, they they're not going to throw off the same amount of cash flow. So with real estate, you get cash flow, you get tax benefits, you get tax write offs, and appreciation. So appreciation comes from the, the natural market appreciating um, three, five, seven percent, you know, whatever that um, that site, that housing cycle is doing at the time, maybe 10 percent, maybe 20 percent like the last couple of years. So that appreciation is happening through just a natural market. But 
your tenants are paying down the mortgage and the debt. So like now you're you're having someone else give you this gap of, of, of equity in a property through appreciation and mortgage pay down. The point is with stocks, you can't do that. That they're one way. They either appreciate 10% every year, and that's all you get. Whereas residential, you know, real estate, real estate investing, you're getting tax benefits, tenants paying your mortgage, appreciation, uh, cash flow. And by cash flow, I mean uh, not just your mortgage is paid, like all the utilities get paid. You know, you're putting aside for reserves for, uh, you know, big maintenance items, any repairs. And then you get money on top of that. Like, oh, okay. So all the debt and all the, the things associated with running this property, maintaining and managing this property, you then get more money on top of that. So that's what I mean by cash flow. You can't get that with the socks. So, going into the uh we'll do it in an analysis right so every time you go to look at a property um to buy for an investment whether it's a single family two family three four twelve thirty eighty you're gonna want to analyze it you know you're gonna take what the at least my what i do is i take okay what is it how is it performing right now with their asking price and how could it perform or is it already tapped out is it already completely renovated are the rents already as high as they could be um there's a lot of nuances when you're analyzing a property um and these particular investors that i just worked with they would only look at what is it getting right now at the asking price that they're at they didn't take into consideration even though i guided them and, and advised them hey look at the potential of this property look at what it looks like if you do these certain things over the next two three five twelve months you don't get rich in real estate overnight it's a get rich long scheme not a get rich quick scheme ten, if you can wait 10 years you buy a property and wait 10 years you, you will get rich but it takes 10 years and that's the tough part but so what i'll do here is i'll share an analysis of a property it's a three unit from an investment standpoint unless it's heavily heavily discounted two unit or single family it's not really an investment property at least not here in new england or what i want to look for and everybody's going to be a little different but from a pure investment standpoint i'm only looking at three units four units or, or greater um the, the what you need for um a loan is a bit different when you start looking at five units and above so three and four small or is called small multifamily, and that's kind of the, the something anybody could get into anybody and the market we're in and and continuing to to move into there's a lot of opportunity for good deals great deals it's analyzing and watching every day 20 minutes 30 minutes a day of what's going on in the market looking at properties analyzing properties knowing what's a good deal what's a bad deal where can i bake this one where what can i do here to make it different make it better um if that's the strategy you want to do like everyone likes a discounted deal especially if you just got to do some sweat equity and, and do the hard part which is you know um bringing rents to market value bringing condition up you know, forced appreciation and other things like that. So what I've got here is a, an analysis of a property in Manchester that was, that I just purchased. Hope everyone can see the screen here. So this property, Manchester, Southern part of the city, it's a small multifamily, so three unit, and it is on the smaller side. And when I say smaller side, I mean it's bedroom and bathroom count. So I also own and 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 uh, know a lot of people who own some larger three units. So you know, three bedrooms and one bath, three bedrooms and one bath, three bedrooms and one bath. Like that's a large building. 
This one's a little bit smaller. Um, and, and that, that one I just mentioned, those typically are around $500,000 right now in this market. Um, three bedrooms, one bath, three bedroom, one bath, three bedroom, one bath, you know, anywhere from 450 to 525. Um, it's kind of a prime price point. They, certainly they can be higher. Certainly they can be a little bit lower, but those are outliers and definitely worth looking at why they're that. You know, do they make a lot of income? So they're more or do they need a lot of work and they're less. If you see those, no less, let me know. I'll help you analyze it. I'll help you take a look at what, what can be done. So this is a little bit smaller. This is, there's a two bedroom, a one bedroom and a one bedroom. So on the smaller end, but so sub 400,000, like, wow, three units for four, under 400,000. That's fantastic. This property had been on the market for uh, about a hundred days. I'd seen it come on and off the market. I actually went on and off the market three times, three times. So when I say, you know, watching properties every day or every, you know, taking a half hour every day to see what's going on in the market, this is what I mean. So you watch these things. You watch, go under contract, come out of contract, price reduction, go under contract, come out of contract, price reduction, smaller, go under contract, come out of contract. Now is the time to act. Like two times ago would have been a time to act, but like now is definitely a time to act. So. This particular uh, seller started at 389, which is not a bad price. And that truly probably is right around market value in a normal market where interest rates are not seven and a half percent. And if the condition were of the units was better. Um, so when I say, oh, you know, this is a great deal because I was able to get it for 340,000. I then asked the the seller to pay 2% of my closing costs. And a perk of being uh, a real estate agent is I can use the commission that I would earn towards um you know, I'm just going to use that money towards, you know, my closing costs at closing anyway. So for this particular deal, um I have closing costs, so I've got my purchase price here. And this is a spreadsheet that sort of auto calculates. I've got my spreadsheet here. Uh, so my purchase price, 340. That gives me at 80% loan to value of 272. Closing costs, I had to kind of manually factor this one because closing costs are typically around 4% when you're buying. So what I did was I reduced by the amount of uh, commission that I would get. I took that out plus the 2% uh, the seller was also taking off. And that's 2% of this total 340,000. So that's uh, $6,800 that he was giving me towards my closing costs. So all that subtracted out of the closing costs is a, a net negative of $3,000. I included a renovation line here uh, because I knew that the property was gonna need some uh, love in some of the units. How do I know this number? Well, you can go on bigger pockets. They've got a uh, an analyzer that gives you sort of a renovation analyzer, but I've done this before. So I have a, a, a pretty good idea as to what these things are going to cost. I think this is, and, and again, knowing that just a, a baseline upgrade, it's going to be about $20,000 for three of the units. One's decent, just needs very little. Uh, one's going to need more. So it's probably going to take more of this 20,000. And then actually another unit, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more in depth after I finish this. And I'll show you kind of how to, how to work it. It's going to need more. So, but I didn't factor that, uh, cause I'm adding, I might add a bedroom or two into that one. So that's going to bring this renovation budget up more, but we'll play with that. And all this, calculator is is to play with the different numbers and see where things are at see what a deal looks like and you can adjust purchase price you can adjust closing costs you can adjust renovation you can adjust down payment and a big one right now is adjusting these interest rates knowing what your interest rates are and adjusting them accordingly so we've got a total loan amount of 272 the down payment ends up being 68,000 if you're taking 20% of this total amount, 68,000. 
And then your total out of pocket with the renovation is so 85. You're like, wait, 68 plus 20 is 688. Well, let's remember we've got this negative 3,000. So it'll be out of pocket at 85,000 once all said and done. Now, if I took this line item out, let's say there's no renovation. Again, this is what I mean. This is why we play with this. We play with the spreadsheet. 65,000. So this is just a rough analysis. These, the lender and, the, and when I go to closing, these numbers might be different. I will tell you though, my total out of pocket at closing was $64,711. I'm good with that. Like, that's great. So this, just to go to show you that, that this is a, a, a good tool to use. Um, so that's this part of the cash flow analyzer. Uh, so remember what I talked about what cash flow is after you're taking out all your expenses what you're left with so we'll go here here's our mortgage so 272 is the is the mortgage amount uh the mortgage balance this gives you an idea of the payment for principal and interest interest rate so talk to your lender talk to matt what are interest rates for this particular property um and, and what you're doing so what i decided to do on this one was take a five-year adjustable rate mortgage so I'm locked for five years, and after that, it can only go up by two percent, two points, um, if rates are higher at that point, which we don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. But I was willing to take that gamble. The deal worked with five point seven five, and if I jump over here, and really where I'm watching is this section over here. Where really where I'm watching is okay, so. If I buy it as it is right now, it's actually a negative deal. <laughs> Rich, why would you buy a negative deal? You're not making any money. What are you doing? We'll get there. Uh, so let's say it jumped up 2%. Okay, now it's even worse negative. But here's current rents and current condition. Here's market rents and market condition. It didn't adjust that much. It really didn't. 300 bucks, it's still a great deal. It's still a great deal. Say it goes to 10, because over the three years following, it can adjust up, up to eight points. So eight, well, eight, eight plus five is what, 13.75. Okay, now we're like, holy cow. But the idea, again, it's all about strategy. What is your plan in the next five years? Well, my plan in the next five years is to renovate, increase rents, Get this property to that 389 value I know it is. Plus, the market's going to appreciate. Is it going to be worth 420 then? Very possible. Um, I don't know. So, the five year plan likely to sell or refinance if rates come back to 5.75 or below, I'll just refinance into a 30 year fixed rate because I know what I'm looking at. I know what I'm looking at. I've got it right here. I'll just refinance 30 feet or fixed rate. Uh, you know, that costs a little money, but is it worth it to have it in five years? Uh, I mean, for 30 years instead of five. Um, that's a, there's an analysis to that too, uh, that typically it's not worth doing a refinance uh, if you're not going to hold it for a long time. You know, if you're going to hold it for, you know, two or three years after, you're actually losing money. So if you do, Again, that's why the five-year mark is so important. Like, you know, it's probably not worth getting rid of within five years, but I'm not also not opposed to selling it if another deal pops up where I can get the equity from this and buy that. And that's a strategy session. But for this particular conversation, this is just analyzing this deal. We're at 5.75 for five years. All right, so I come over here, I say, all right, just to, uh, where am I at? Current rent, negative 4% cash on cash return. So cash on cash return is factored by how much cash, down payment, closing costs, did I have to take out of my pocket? And what is the return on that? So your return on your investment, negative 4%. Oh my God, why would anybody do that? Oh. I'm actually losing $243 per month, per month. 
what what kind of deal is this, Rich? Why are we talking about this? Well, bear with me. Hold on a second. Let's go further. Market rent, we can see that. So over here, we've got the spreadsheet of potential rent income. Um, uh, over here is current rents. So in the Manchester market, a one bedroom should not be $725. So we're analyzing this property. Why would I want to buy this? Why would anybody want to buy this? Market rent for one bedroom is not $725. I know for a fact one of them, the condition is certainly seven, you know, probably 900, 900 bucks a month, 700 bucks. It shouldn't be 700 bucks a month. One bedrooms in Manchester are 12 to $1,400 per month, 12 to $1,400 for a one bedroom, pretty much anywhere. Um, and those are, you know, they've got to be in, you know, a decent condition to get that. And that's why I give a range. You know, if you've got a class A nice one bedroom, at fourteen hundred bucks, you know, you might if you're in the north end of Manchester, you might be fifteen hundred bucks. This is south end, a little different market. That's why knowing your market's important. Uh, so I've got a two bedroom here, currently renting at ten fifty. Two bedroom, again, I know should be sixteen hundred, just as a general rule. And again, you know how I took these numbers and and these are my estimates, but I was pretty darn close with my total out of pocket. Well, I'm going to be pretty darn close with my market rents. Uh, I just need to be pretty darn close to kind of get a good sense as to what this property is like. Um, so I've got market rents. And again, this is after some some upgrades, some renovation. We're going to be about $1,350, um, $1,324. I was light on this one because it's a little bit different uh, of a prop, of a, of a unit. It's a... Um, it's smaller, one bedroom. So I, I went a little bit lighter. I could even go, you know, 1250 to be super conservative. Um, another hundred bucks difference. And anytime I adjust any of these items here, it adjusts my ratio information chart. Let's continue down to a real the real estate taxes. So these things are... Um, <clears throat> Again, they're pretty well known, but from year to year, they can change, right? You know, real estate taxes just went up in the last uh, 12 to 24 months on uh, pretty much every property here in the Manchester market. So I've got 5,900. Uh, I think it was about 58 and change. So I just went to 5,900, put in a little cushion. Um, the homeowner's insurance now... I know on the size of the building, they're going to be right around twenty one hundred bucks a month. When I got the quote, it said nineteen hundred. I said perfect. But in here, I typically just put twenty one hundred, um, just knowing from experience that that's a safe uh, estimate of what property insurance is going to be. If it's a larger building, we're talking more money. Um, so repairs and maintenance, uh, we're figuring about five percent. Every month, five percent every year, towards uh, the repairs and maintenance and capital expenses. You'll see over here. I don't have any of that filled out because at this point on this side, when we're at market rent, everything should pretty much have been touched, either renovated, upgraded, or serviced. And it's going to be really a variable that we can't we can't accurately. Um, guesstimate right and, and and these numbers are coming off of the annual rent so the annual rent amount of twenty nine thousand seven hundred, and five percent of that is about 1500 bucks well if we moved over to the the new rents at fifty thousand four hundred, that number's gonna be higher right um not uh this is why I have spreadsheets. About twenty five hundred bucks. So we'll put twenty five hundred in here. And this is again setting aside every year this five thousand dollars for repairs, maintenance, and capital expenses. Capital expenses being roofs and boilers and uh, water heaters and things like that. So 
five grand a year we're just putting it aside not touching not touching not touching not touching uh water sewer um smaller building i could probably go a little bit lower than 1500 but i know as a baseline 1500 is going to cover me of uh, larger buildings that are 1500 if you're going over this as you're watching your monthly uh your quarterly in manchester it's quarterly billing if you're watching that and you notice a big discrepancy that's a red flag like you say you get two months at 300 bucks 300 bucks and then the next one 700 bucks go whoa wait what the heck's going on well if you're in the middle of the summer maybe there's um sprinklers you know maybe they're using their sprinkler uh, system so the kids can play in the water okay no big deal if you're in the middle of winter that might be a red flag that you've got a leak you've got sinks faucets dripping running you've got toilets running you've got tubs you've got you've got a, a leak somewhere very likely um so watching those and being important is important um we had a, a pretty big uh leak we were probably at like 2100 dollars a year for water sewer until we got out there and now it's probably like 1300 a year so but 1500 is, is a safe estimate no trash to have to figure out on this one we do have a common electric so hallways exterior um super inexpensive because what do i do every time there's common electric everything gets motion sensor led lights hallways exterior motion sensor led lights take out the switches nobody has control of that that way you don't have to worry about someone leaving a light on for three months it's motion sensor it's led they walk by, it goes on. What more do you need? You know, you're walking up to the building, the light comes on. So that's a huge, huge cost savings. Um, and that also helps to make you make sure you have a regular, you know, regular bill that you're gonna um you're gonna know. So a thousand is like super, super, probably super high. Um we we're about thirty bucks a month. Um, this one I don't know, so that's why I've gone higher. But in another building of mine with all with all LED motion sensors, we're about thirty to forty dollars a month. So really, like at max five hundred bucks. But I don't know on this building yet, so that's why I put a uh, thousand in. Which could be great if it's lower, beautiful. If it's higher, that's not great. So I'd rather go a little bit higher, but not too much. So after all that's said and done, I say, okay, great. Here's my numbers. What I look at when I buy, now I'm at market rent. 80% loan to value. I've got a 24% cash on cash return. I'm getting 24% return on my money. Tell me, where can you get that? Stock market, maybe 10%. Not this year. Not this year. This year, or I should say 2023, by the time this all becomes market rent, will be giving me 24%. You can't get that anywhere else. You can't tell me where. I'd love to hear where you could, because I want to go there. Because this is going to take some work. If there's something I can just just buy and not be not have to do anything to, and and give sixty grand and I can get twenty four percent return on my money every single month, every single year, call me. Let me know. I want to know about it. Um, cash flow. Cash flow. 13 just about 1300 bucks so after all these things are set aside every month in my pocket can go 1300 bucks so think about that this is the power of real estate you if you had 60 70 thousand dollars in your bank you're losing money right now to inflation you could be buying a similar type building and with the right strategy the right team you could be getting 1300 dollars a month in your pocket what's your current what's your mortgage currently is it 1800 bucks is it two grand a month so if you're getting 1300 bucks a month and again we're setting aside all this stuff you know already to not have to worry about you know repairs and things that come up along the way because we're already setting aside for it could you now only like look at your mortgage and say Huh, I'm only paying, you know, 700 bucks a month of mortgage because my my building here, where this money was sitting in the bank account losing money, 
my building is now throwing me 1300 bucks a month. So this is all well and good, right? But we got to go back to the renovation part. And we've got to go back to what one of the units has that could really take this to the next level. So renovation. So let's say we're going to keep them uh, one bed, one bed, two bed. We want to get them to this market rent. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit higher. So 20 grand, I thought we'd probably cover it. But, you know, let's let's say it's it's 10 grand a unit. It, that's probably a bit much, but let's just say to be conservative because that's what we've kind of been doing this whole time. So $30,000 $30, in renovation. All right, well, what did that do? All right, it brought my cash on cash return from 24 to 16. I'm still like, I'm still ahead. I'm still winning. Um, monthly cash flow of 1296. Forget what that number was. So, and this is the great thing about the spreadsheet. So I just hit zero. I look down here. Oh, my monthly cash flow is still the same. I'm just not getting a good, better, as good a better return. Cool. That's okay with me. Still getting 1300 bucks a month in cash flow, but my return is a little bit lower because I had to put some money into it. That's all right. Um, now here's where things can get uh, good. One of the one bedrooms has uh, attic space that is unfinished, Has it is a walk up, has stairs up to it, it is unfinished, has uh, four full size windows, would need, to be considered little space, a an emergency egress, you know, so some sort of stairs down to um, the ground or the roof or or something um, to the other stairs that are out the back, and walls, obviously, floors, uh, insulation, probably a twenty grand job. But probably get it for 20 grand. So, but you know what that does? That makes a one bedroom now a, we'll say it's a three bedroom. It will become a three bedroom. What did I say three bedrooms were? I said two bedrooms were 1600. We're going to be conservative on our rents and say a three bedroom is 1800. So I'm going to take this one. This is the one that could be um, transformed into a three bed and go 1800. And I'm going to adjust this to 50 grand. My cash on cash return is now better than when I didn't add two bedrooms. So it was 16, now it is 18. And now I'm getting $1,741 per month in cash flow. It went from 1296 to 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We're up $441 per month. Now I get it. You're like, well, where, where the heck do I get this 50 grand, Rich? What are you talking about? Like, I, I just put 60000 down or sixty, you know, $5,000 down. That is the, the hard part, right? That is the hard part. So when we look at these properties, we start by saying, okay, if I did nothing, where, what can, what could I realistically be at, you know, because we already said these rents are not market rents and not anywhere close, but you know what, for a year or two, maybe you do nothing and only increase it to 900, 900 and 1300. Now we'll go conservative 1200. Not that great. Not that great. So you really, when you're when you're analyzing these properties, you've got to keep this in mind. That's why this, you know, a spreadsheet or an analysis, you need to run these different scenarios. Well, if I just did, you know, nothing, where am I at? Uh, that's not that good. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do the deal. The the deal only makes sense, right? That's why we're analyzing. It only makes sense is if I do these upgrades and get full market rents uh, or get 
pretty darn close. Let's say we went to 1100. And you got to play with this, right? You got to play with the spreadsheet because, uh, or a spreadsheet because that's the point. And let's say you went to 1300. All right. Not bad. Again, 11% return. Still not bad. Better than what you can get in most other places. Um, cash flows 603 bucks. So as we analyze this, you know, I'll right out the gate. I said, okay, I'm going to be putting 65,000, but I need at least 20 on top of that. So you prepare, you plan, you strategize 20 to then get 13, 13, and 16. All right, so for $85,000, 18% return on money, cash flow, 1300 bucks a month. The whole point of this is just to, just to show you how to analyze a property, how to strategize, right? The biggest thing is strategy. Like, what are we gonna do to this? Is it, is, am I gonna put two more bedrooms in in the next 12 months? Probably not, very likely not. Very likely it'll stay one bedroom for the short term because, again, I, I got the same question as you. Where, well, where is that money coming from? It's going to come somewhere. You know, I don't have 50 grand just sitting around to turn this into something completely different. But remember, I've got five years before I really should do anything to this because I've got that 5.75 rate. So it can be a five-year project. You know, it doesn't all have to be done in a day. Um, again, like I said, it's a get rich quick, uh, a get rich slow game, not a get rich quick game. Um, so having a plan in place, this isn't a bad asset to own. It's going to beat inflation. It's going to grow in value. You know, if, it, and if it's worth 425000 in five years, and the tenants have paid down this $272,000. Let me give you a for instance on that one. <clears throat> so let's say in five years, they only pay it down to about 250 and it's worth 425. So let's just do 250, 425 minus 250, it's 175,000 in equity. And I've only over five years, hopefully output 115,000. I right? just with through appreciation, the tenant paying it down, plus doing some, some sweat equity, building in some sweat equity. I made 60 grand five years. Uh, that's 10, 12 grand a year. Yeah, I'm in 12 grand a year in appreciation on top of this money monthly cash flow. So. That's a quick uh, dive on that one. I've got more I can do. I've got others I can do. Maybe there's another asset class that this can happen in. Let me know. I want to talk. I want to know about it. Um, Matt, I hope you're feeling better. I hope uh, we tried to get you on, but your voice was pretty harsh. So we, uh, you decided not to do that. That's all good. If you get uh, some value out of this, let me know. Um, you want to find out any more information about it, you can uh, go on www.findnhhomesforsale.com. You can go on any social media at Rich J. Racine. You can search Racine Realty Team. Myself and Jan are there for you. Uh, and all, as always, Matt McDonald, he, you can find him on uh, www.findnhhomesforsale.com as well. And on social media at M McDonald 01, I believe. Uh, but if you can't find him, just call me. I'll let you know. And that's why money matters. <laughs>